Tara. And I'm Jean. Throughout this video series, we'll be introducing you to the people behind the planning, the policies, the grant making, and the essential services that the Metropolitan Council provides to the region. And today, we're in Washington County, talking to Jason Willett from the Metropolitan Council's Environmental Services Division. Hi, Jean. Hi, Jason. Thanks for coming out all this way. Oh, you bet. This is a beautiful spot. So Jason, you work for the Environmental Services Division. What's your job at the Council? So I am Director of Finance and Energy by title. I am going through a little bit of a transition right now. For several years, I have um, been excited about and, and helped the Council get started on energy and sustainability projects. And I'm still growing in that energy role. I lead uh, ES's team on that and now have some council-wide responsibilities too um, because of the Thrive Project where the public really asks us to do more. How did you get interested in energy conservation? What was the impetus for that? We did all sorts of environmental things when growing up. I visited all 50 states, mostly in the back of a station wagon, and we would stay as cheaply as we could, usually in old canvas tents in parks around the country. So I got an appreciation for outdoors, really from my family. And slowly but surely that's grown into really a fair amount of concern about the climate change, frankly. I read Scientific American for fun. It's quite clear that the science is telling us that we are um, sentencing our children and future generations to really tough times if we don't mitigate our, our emissions. I do, both in my personal life and at work, try to advocate you know, sustainable operations. These are among the latest technology. They have micro inverters behind each panel. So if there's a little bit of shading, it doesn't cut off the rest of them. What kind of power does this array produce? This is about uh, six kilowatts of capacity. If the sun was perfectly right on it, that's its maximum instantaneous capacity. Do you have the kind of setup where if you ha produce extra energy that you don't need, it can go into the grid or? No, it is grid connected. And Minnesota is actually the first state in the nation to have what's called net metering. So right now there's nobody in the house and when the sun out, we clearly are sending electrons out the wire and the neighbors are using them. So do your neighbors ever thank you for the energy they're getting from your solar well, panels? I know they don't. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the biggest difference, Jason, between the panel array you have on your roof and the one that we'll be seeing in the front yard? The panel in the front yard was state-of-the-art in 2007 when I built it. The uh, panel itself is on a dual axis tracking pole, so it follows the sun. It starts in the morning in the east and then in, in the evening it will be way over there in the west. And it gets about 40% more production that way. Panels themselves have no moving parts at all, it's just the tracker on this pole. It needs to be able to take 90 mile an hour wind and quarter inch hail without damage. That's a uh, code on it. Some people think that Minnesota is not great for solar because we're so cold, and that's wrong. Uh, the um, electronics and the physics like the cold, and we get a reflection off the snow. So originally when I built this panel, I was net zero, meaning that it was sized to the amount so that I wouldn't have to pay or get paid by Excel on the average over a year. I've done a couple things since then. I've added geothermal, which takes electricity, and an electric car. It's all about priorities. You know, what do you want to spend your money on? I like to brag about this. Other people want to brag about their sports cars. This is my totally electric Nissan Leaf. So this is not a hybrid. There's no gas. There's no oil, there's no air filters. One of the hidden things people don't know, the advantage of an electric car is there's virtually no maintenance. I have 22,000 miles on it now. The only thing I've done is rotate the tires twice. I think for the most part it's powered by the solar energy. So it's not only clean at the car level, but it's also totally clean. So I'm kind of proud of that. But I can't take it up north. So we do have a gas guzzling Prius that we take. <laughs> you saw my wife take off of that. <laughs> So this is a, a Navian water heater. There is a very small amount, but there's not a tank of water like most house water heater. And it heats it up very fast. You can see it was, again, um, I picked devices based on Energy Star, which is a good rating system. And you can set the temperature and stuff like that. But 
you know, 99% of the time you're not using water, why are you heating it? What do you wish people understood about the Metropolitan Council? By being able to do things that are the right things for the region, they're not always optimal for every city. We save the money, we save the environment, and I'll bet a lot of people don't know that. What did you think you'd be doing when you grew up? That's funny to think about because it doesn't really have anything to do with the earth or the environment. I wanted to be an astronaut. You know, I was, I'm of the age where the, the moon visit was really pretty new and exciting, and I had pictures of the moon with the, all the Apollo landings on my wall, and that's what I wanted to do. Jason, thank you so much. This has been really interesting and a lot of fun to get to know you better and, and see what you've got going out here on your wow. property. Well, thanks for coming out. I, I appreciate the chance to talk about the council and my toys and show off my toys. So great. It's been great fun for me, too. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks so much for watching. For more information about the Metropolitan Council, you can visit our website at www.metrocouncil.org.